kind of surprised that it looks like people are putting Christmas lights up already. A little too early, isn't it? And what's going on today? I read a lot about robots and stuff, it seems, and autonomous, I guess, drones and tech. How about this first one? It's kind of interesting. This one here says, Leonardo the bipedal robot can ride a skateboard and walk a slack line. Leo carves out a new type of locomotion somewhere between walking and flying. Researchers at Caltech have built a bipedal robot that combines walking with flying to create a new type of locomotion, making it exceptionally nimble and capable of complex movements. Part walking robot, part flying drone, the newly developed Leonardo, shorts for legs on board drone or Leo for short, can walk a slack line, hop, and even ride a skateboard. Developed by a team at Caltech Center for Autonomous Systems and Technologies, Leo is the first robot that uses multi-joint legs and propeller-based thrusters to achieve a fine degree of control over its balance. It's kind of interesting seeing what it does. It walks, it flies, and I guess as they say, it rides a skateboard, I guess, to demonstrate things like balancing. Although it's kind of funny because watching this, technically it would be quote illegal, right? It's flying, look at that. I think that's my example too. How a lot of the regulations and stuff, they're so short-sighted where they stifle things like innovation and creativity that don't even relate to safety, like in these instances. Their train of thought was kind of interesting. It says here, we drew inspiration from nature. Think about the way birds are able to flap and hop to navigate telephone lines, said Soon Jo Chung, corresponding author and Brent Professor of Aerospace and Control and Dynamical Systems. A complex yet intriguing behavior happens as birds move between walking and flying. We wanted to understand and learn from that. I think it's good overall for stuff like this, but it kind of makes you think too. You need people to be able to experiment with stuff like this in order to innovate. You have stuff that has nothing to do with safety, for example, like, oh, it lift off the ground flying a little bit, that's it, it's illegal. And then I read this one, which is kind of interesting. It's one of those challenges trying to teach a drone to go through obstacles to fly on its own autonomously, for example. This one says, learning high speed flight in the wild. Quadcopters are agile. Unlike most other machines, they can traverse extremely complex environments at high speeds. To date, only expert human pilots have been able to fully exploit their capabilities. Autonomous operation with onboard sensing and computation has been limited to low speeds. So they have a solution. It's kind of interesting in their videos. They actually show, I guess, their studies and techniques versus something like a Skydio drone. It says, here, we propose an end-to-end -end approach that can autonomously fly quad rotors through complex natural and human-made environments at high speeds with purely onboard sensing and computation. The key principle is to directly map noisy sensory observations to collision-free trajectories in a receding horizon fashion. This direct mapping drastically reduces processing latency and increases robustness to noisy and incomplete perception. By simulating realistic sensor noise, our approach achieves zero-shot transfer from simulation to challenging real-world environments that were never experienced during training. Dense forests, snow-covered terrain, derailed trains, and collapsed buildings. That's kind of interesting in terms of the progress for stuff like this. Will it just be a matter of time where anyone can literally just chuck up the drone up in the air or have you follow you anywhere? Or in this case, just say, I want you to go from here to there without any human intervention. They already have stuff like that in a bigger, I guess, capacity, but those are meant more for, I guess, open skies versus, I guess, like they say, going through a huge wooded area on its own. I can imagine that being useful for things like search and rescue. And this bill was kind of interesting with all that news about Facebook and stuff like that, internet addiction and so forth. How about this one where, there's usually the conversation how platforms are protected from people making comments and all that, but this one here says, Australia wants Facebook held liable for anonymous comments. How does that work, huh? It says, Australia's Prime Minister on Thursday described social media as a coward's palace and warned that digital platforms, including Facebook, should be held liable for defamatory comments posted anonymously. Anonymous commentators who use social media to vilify and bully have become the latest battleground between Prime Minister Scott Morrison's government and US tech giants. The government wants social media users to be required to identify themselves. Whoa, there's a sticky topic there, I guess you could say. How would people feel about that where you're not allowed to, I guess, post anything like that anonymously online anymore? Like you have to have some kind of real verified ID. That's kind of crazy to think about. 
One of the first things I think about too actually are video games where people play them online. People have aliases and stuff all the time. So how would that work in that case? If you're forcing people to use their real name and all of that is kind of dangerous in my opinion. So you gotta think of it really thoroughly, not just base it on one specific topic in an emotional manner. See you guys later.